Well, folks, there is something called the red pill movement. It's sort of a far right movement that focuses in on saying the unstable. And now many of the red pilled have taken the position that it's bad for men to get married. A fascinating debate has broken out about the value of marriage. It's, it's really interesting. So there are a bunch of people on the so-called red pilled right who have now suggested that marriage is bad for men, that men should not get married. Now, the case that they're making is not the liberal feminist case that basically men are useless and terrible and a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle or anything like that. The case that they are making is that the stakes of marriage have been changed by things like no-fault divorce, custody arrangements, the, the child support payments and all the rest, spousal support, that basically the legal regimen has made it not a bargain for men to get married. Now, I agree with, with the critique of all of those policies. I think no-fault divorce is a disaster area. I think that the child custody arrangements that, that basically always go to mom no matter what, that is, a, that is a serious problem. When you shift the incentive structure, there's a reason why the majority of divorces, the vast majority of divorces are now initiated by women. That, that is not because in the past, women were, were wildly abused and today they are wildly liberated. What that really is is when you shift the incentive structure and it turns out that all the risk is now taken by men, women are going to be the ones who actually activate and push that divorce button. However, the red pill have taken it one step further. And now they're telling young men, you should not get married. It's too dangerous to get married. Don't get married. That's foolish. That's foolish. So let's, let's go through some of these arguments because they become very popular on the right. So let's start with Pearl Davis. So Pearl Davis is an anti-feminist who has uh, become pretty popular these days. A lot of people label her sort of a female Andrew Tate, although without the uh, checkered past. And uh, here is Pearl Davis talking about marriage. The trad cons, Daily Wire conservatives were are saying that Pearl's just a doom and gloomer who lies about stats, just focuses on the negatives, never the positives, and all the men complaining are just crybabies. And so one day he comes home and he finds out that his wife had called the police on him and told them that the first time they hooked up 10 years ago, he, um, he had quote unquote raped her. And the truth of the matter is when a man has children, they're not his kids. A man has no way to have children and those kids be actually his. They're always hers because the courts give the women custody 90% of the time and rich men are really the only ones that have the money to fight it and the time. So I, I ask the Daily Wire, Jeremy Boeing, Matt Walsh, um, are, is this just crybabies? Are they just, are they just, they're crybaby, weak men who don't man up and want to risk that? So, you know, it's interesting because instead of demanding that the laws change and demanding women face repercussions for doing this stuff, you guys demand that men need to step up and take part in a system that discriminates against them. You say, oh, find a girl that prays, she won't do it. But, and I had this thought too, until I found a Muslim girl that did the same thing. I found a Christian girl that did the same thing. I found a Catholic girl. It's happening all over. Whether you want to believe it or not, it is happening. I don't care about your religion. I don't care about your church. This happens everywhere. Okay, so the argument that she's making against it, all these marital policies, those are, those are correct arguments. And nobody is disregarding the pain of men who have been wrongfully victimized under these circumstances where the incentive structure is completely stacked against them. That is true. However, the benefits of marriage are still unbelievable. It does matter who you marry. To pretend that there is no difference between the person that you marry, that it's happening with Christians and Muslims, and, and it's all the same, that's statistically untrue. There are things that you can do to mitigate against the risk of divorce, and the person that you marry is the chief mitigation. The, the truth is that in the Jewish community, we always have a backup plan in the sense that every marital contract is a prenup. Every marital contract is a prenup, right? A, a Jewish ketubah is a prenup. It guarantees certain levels of spousal support, for example. If you if you give a get, then it, it, it makes prior arrangements and all the rest. But one of the things, throwing out the baby with the bathwater is not the solution. So how about both? How about we revise the system of law? But also, in the meantime, you do need to find a spouse and get married to her. And if what it requires for you to, to feel comfortable doing that is to shift away from the state mandated law and toward a contract arrangement, then, then do that as well, right? We can have churches that sponsor that sort of thing because the truth is that those are enforceable contracts in court very often, the custody, pre-custody arrangements and all the rest of that sort of thing. I, I want to go through some of the stats with regard to the benefits of marriage because I think that it's also possible to exaggerate how bad things are for men. That doesn't mean they aren't really bad for men who end up divorced. 
or that women aren't divorcing men at an incredibly high rate overall, or that women aren't initiating the vast majority of divorce. Like, again, I agree with many of the critiques of current marital law. I agree with a lot of that stuff. The problem is that when you take it so far that you say that the solution for men is to not get married, now what you have done is you've created a second order of fact where unmarried men become actual menaces. Okay, the reality is that men channel their aggressive drives toward building or they channel it toward destroying. And a system in which women are unmarried and men are un unmarried, that's something that the left wants. And if you acquiesce in that, then you actually end up destroying the very fundamental basis of society that allows for the growing and building of a society beyond the leftist principles. I, my, my, my answer to Pearl is both and. But yes, get married. And also, we should work to change those laws. But by the way, the way that we date has, has an effect on how we get married and who we get married to. I mean, when I dated my wife, we went in knowing as we began to date that we were, we were not going to sleep together until we were married. We knew for a fact that we were going to have long conversations about things that mattered. And, and this is, by the way, the, the best available data suggests that this is how you end up with a tangible, durable marriage that lasts a very long time, is that everybody has to be committed going in. That value, when you put values at the center of dating, that obviously is, doesn't mean that you're going to be impervious to the possibility of divorce. But it does mean that your chances of divorce are really a lot lower, a lot lower. Now, I don't want to rip on Pearl here, and I don't think I am ripping on Pearl, frankly. Um, but th there, there are a bunch of other people who are making similar claims. So, for example, uh, Brian Atlas was on the Whatever podcast, and, and here he was talking about marriage. Would you consider a prenup? Prenups are regularly thrown out all the time. Mm -hmm. They're typically non-enforceable, especially the longer the marriage goes on, the less likely they are to be enforced. Men get absolutely destroyed in marriage and in divorce. Financially, when it comes to the kids, women are more likely to get custody. And then also, if you do get a divorce, the financial cost of just getting the attorney, getting all that involved. If there, if it's a contested divorce, you're going to spend mid five figures, six figures on, mm -hmm. on attorneys. And you got to pay for her attorney too. 50% of marriages end in divorce. 80% of divorces are initiated by women. 90% if she's college educated. 90% of child support payments go from men to women. 97% of alimony payments go from men to women. You know, you have no fault to divorce. So a woman can cheat on you. She can still get half your shit. Okay. Again, a lot of what he's saying is true. The stats on marriage are not completely true. I'll go through those in just one second. Again, the rip on, on the divorce law is a good rip. It is a fine rip. And the answer is not for men to avoid marriage. The answer is for men to find a good woman to get married to who is committed to values. Yes, of course, marriage is a risk. Of course it is. And that risk is disproportionately borne by men at this point. That is true also. But is the reward worth the risk? The answer in a huge majority of circumstances where both people are committed, like say, have, share Christian values, for example, the, ri the risk is is worth it, is is the basic principle. He, again, the, the, these arguments are made not just by people like this. Andrew Tate has made the, the same sorts of, of arguments. Here's Andrew Tate talking about how men don't benefit from marriage. I think it's a fantastic environment, and I think in an idealistic world, that's the way it would be. I think the reason it's not happening today is that I don't think many men actually benefit from marriages or relationships anymore. And people are always going to have to do require some degree of incentive. I think that we've set up the world now in a way where men are seen as worker droids. They're expected to go work all day, come home, clean up as well, share the cleaning with the woman, not have any, not no meal prepared for them not have any authority over the household and just and just be a worker droid and be a sad. And I don't think that many people understand that men are intrinsically wired to desire respect amongst our peers and in our environments. This is why CEOs work so hard because they get respect in their company. Okay, so uh, again, I don't disagree with much of what you say, but the solution very often with the red pill kind of movement, the diagnosis is correct and the solution is wrong. That, that, that happens very, very often in, in this sort of movement. I want to talk to you about Daily Wire's most trusted privacy partner and premier sponsor of this show, ExpressVPN. Internet service providers know every single website you visit and can sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who then use that data to target you. ExpressVPN helps prevent all that. They reroute your network data through a secure encrypted tunnel so your internet service provider can't see or sell your activity online. ExpressVPN is super easy to use. You just fire up the app, you click one button. It works on phones, laptops, routers, so everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can be protected. Our entire team is using ExpressVPN while we are here in Israel, which gives us peace of mind knowing that our work and our personal data is, in fact, protected. You should do the same. Protect your online privacy by visiting expressvpn.com slash Ben to get the same VPN I use. Use my link to get three extra months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash Ben. Express 
vpn.com slash Ben. Go check them out right now. It's expressvpn.com slash Ben. I've been using them for years. They protect all my data. Obviously, I take my data pretty seriously. You should take your data just as seriously as I do by heading on over to expressvpn.com slash Ben and getting that extra three months for free. First, did you know that poor sleep, really bad for you, can cause weight gain, mood issues, poor mental health, lower productivity? Sleep is the foundation of our mental and physical health and performance in our days. Having a consistent nighttime routine, non-negotiable, you need it. If you're struggling with sleep, you really should check out Beam. Beam's top selling, Beam Dream, they have a new formula. Dream contains a powerful all natural blend of reishi, magnesium, L-theanine, and epigenin to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and help you wake up refreshed. Just mix Beam Dream into hot water or milk, stir or froth, and enjoy before bedtime. Today, my listeners get a special discount on the Beam Dream powder. That's their best-selling healthy hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. It's available in delicious flavors like cinnamon cocoa, chocolate peanut butter, and mint chip. Better sleep has never tasted better. If you want to try Beam's best-selling dream powder, get up to 40% off today for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash Ben. Use code Ben at checkout. That's shopbeam.com slash Ben. Use code Ben for up to 40% off. Beam sent the product down to the offices. Our staff is loving it. Go check it out right now. Shopbeam.com slash Ben. Use code Ben and get 40% off. The, the reason, by the way, that Pearl and the rest of the Red Pill movement think the way they do is because of arguments like the one that, that a person named Destiny makes with Pearl in this particular clip. Women now earning men have a hard time respecting the men they're with. That's not true. That's not true. I read into that data and it explained why. A lot of the time the women reported that they were expected to be in charge of the household duties mm-hmm. and still work a job. Mm-hmm. And they add to... Oh, come on. What percent of modern women actually cook? I'm just saying this shit's automated nowadays. I mean, you have a washing machine, a dishwasher. Yeah, well, so sure, you have you to say, put it in the air fryer. But as much as, it's on, on. as much as it's automated, men still don't do it. I'm, yeah, still yeah. don't do they it. They still don't do it. I'm, that's so, it. that's the issue. Is that the, one of the but big why, problems with outsourcing. reason for divorce, one of, It absolutely is a reason. Sure. When you oh, get when you get older and you manage a household on your own, Pearl, you'll see how mm-hmm. f***ing annoying it is when you're mm-hmm. working and then you come home and yeah. everything is f***ed up and horrible and nobody's f***ing mm-hmm. cleaning anything. Yeah, yeah. that is yeah. a totally valid reason for divorce, of course. Yeah. Chores, to break up a home, Pearl, a family, have kids. you lived in a filthy home? Like, it's so funny because, like, lifelong friends from, like, grade school to high school will dorm in college and then hate each other forever over, like, bad dorm roommates. Yeah. And that's not even a relationship. So, yeah, of course I think stuff like this is perfectly valid. For I think sure. I think splitting up, and splitting, up, splitting up duties in the household is, like, one of the most important parts of, like, a relationship because yeah. yeah. it's where you're spending most of the time together this is why i say people get triggered when i say i don't think you're even dating until you live together because until you live mm-hmm. together you don't really know what the other person's like and once you start living together and you see what the household duties are like then you get a feel for what the relationship is so what destiny is saying here is totally crazy okay the idea that you get divorced let's say you have kids you get divorced because you can't split up who handles the dishwasher is nuts and comparing marriage to roommates college roommates yes because you don't expect to be roommates with your roommate for the rest of your life and have children with them generally speaking A marriage is not supposed to be a contractual arrangement that is purely about who shares household duties. It's supposed to be about building a household. So it's that attitude toward divorce that is making the red pill crew basically say, okay, well, if that's your version of marriage, then I'm not in. I agree. If that were my version of marriage, I would not be in. The point that I'm making is that that shouldn't be anybody's version of marriage. Just like the current version of divorce shouldn't be anybody's version of divorce. And I want to give you some stats that demonstrate that not all marriages are created equal. Not all predicates for marriage are the same. So Brad Wilcox who is a social science scholar on all of this. He has a book called Get Married, and it's all about marriage and divorce. And here are some of the facts in that book that are well substantiated by by the data. The number one factor in predicting a high quality marriage is perceived partner commitment. If you believe that your partner is deeply committed to the marriage, you will be deeply committed to the marriage, which is one of the reasons why it really matters how you date. It really, really matters how you date. So I agree that in a context where you're picking up a girl at a bar and then you live together and then you get married to her, that's a very risky situation. You put yourself in a situation that is very risky, but that is not how I've ever recommended dating. That is not ever how I've recommended getting married. It is all part of a holistic view of how male-female relationships work. If you just take marriage as an institution and you just throw it out there and however you date is supposed to be equivalent, that of course is not true. Women who attend church are 50% less likely to divorce. For example, so when you heard Pearl earlier talk about, for example, I've seen Christian women, I've seen Muslim women. Yes, but the question is likelihood. You can always find somebody in any group who does X, Y, or Z. The question is how often does that happen? How do you mitigate your risk? As far as the stat that 50% of marriages end in divorce, just about 40% right now of first marriages end in divorce, which is way, way too high. It's also down significantly since the 1980s. But again, it's not equivalent between groups. College-educated parents' risk of divorce has fallen by about 25% since the 1970s. And here's a good stat. Almost 90% of their children for college-educated parents 
are being raised and married largely in tech families today. So it turns out that there is actually a formula to a successful marriage. It tends to be conservative, religious, highly educated. Those would be like the biggest, the biggest things that are going to affect whether you end up staying married or whether you end up divorced. By the way, another factor that ends up determining whether you stay married or end up divorced is again about the nature of the marriage. Do you have kids? Marriages with kids divorce far less often than marriages without kids. In fact, the divorce rate for couples with kids is about 40% lower than the divorce rate for couples without kids, which makes sense because you have less investment. Once you have kids, then actually it damages another party for you to get divorced over the dishwasher. And then, then, then somebody else pays for your crimes at that point. 77% of college-educated conservative parents are still in their first marriage. So are 70% of moderates and 68% of liberals. And again, the, the number of newly divorced people per 1,000 married Americans has declined pretty markedly since the 80s. It was 22.6 in 1980. It is 13.6 today in 2021. As far as the notion that it's like damaging financially for men to get married, no, it's, it's damaging for men to get divorced. It's not damaging for men to get married. Married men in their 30s are in about $95,000. If they're cohabiting, they're in about $68,000. If they're single, they're in about $42,000. The average marriage premium in household assets is more than $290,000 for a stably married man. So. Again, I think what people are actually arguing about over here, to be fair to the Red Pill crew, I think what they're actually arguing about is divorce. And so the question is, are you more likely to stay married or are you more likely to end up in a divorce situation? And that is a, a fair question, depending on the process that you use for dating, in the cultural milieu in which you live. In, in the community where I live, an Orthodox Jewish community, not a lot of divorce, like very, very low divorce rates. Why? Well, because everyone is religiously committed. Because everybody goes into marriage believing it is a sacred bond that actually matters because people don't date for sex. People actually date looking forward to the day when they will have kids together because every family in my neighborhood has four plus kids. Those are the preconditions. But if the if the idea here is that your 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 basic binary is are you going to be married or divorced? Divorced is is typically worse than never married and married is way better than both divorced and never married. And so, yeah, it's a risk. But is it a coin flip? I don't think it's a coin flip. I think it is a it is a decision that you have to make as to what kind of person you wish to date, how you wish to date that person, what kind of relationship you wish to build and how seriously you take that commitment in the first place. Do the laws need to change? Absolutely, and they need to change. They're garbage. I totally agree with that. It is easy for men to be victimized under these circumstances. It's so easy that you should not enter the risk. Well, let's look at some of the upsides and the downsides. Here's a chart from Brad about opioid overdose deaths by gender, educational attainment, and marital status. And what you see is that among men, if you are single, never married, what you see is that the opioid overdoses per 100,000 age 25 plus, it's like 25 for single, never married men. It is even higher for divorced men. And it is extremely low for married men. Really, really low for married men. And again, that's the, that's the, are you going to be one of the people who has divorced or not? One of the things you can know going in is, you will never get divorced. And then you have to make sure that you marry a woman who will never get divorced. And we can't pretend that, that that divorce sort of falls on you like rain from the heavens. That's not right. The person who's, this is why I give dating advice all the time. My number one dating advice, date for values, date for values. In the end, that's the only thing that's going to remain. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda.